Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. In today's video, we are going to give you a really solid introduction to how to use reference when sculpting. This will give you really lifelike and interesting sculpts, which you can't really do without this kind of reference. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we start off with is to actually collect the reference. You can collect this from any source, it doesn't really matter. What's important is that uh, you are sticking to a select few pieces of reference. In our case, we are using Prince Philip of the UK, which because he is a scary, he is a scary, <laughs> scary royal, which means he's perfect for this kind of stuff. In in our case, we want to use um, a creature, or we want to make a creature, and then try to find something which is as close as possible. And I, uh, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> he's pretty creature like. He's pretty creature like. Like really, this is video is almost a bit too much on the nose because this give this guy some some scary ears, and he is essentially there. He would be like the perfect sort of devil character, yes, or like a TV show or something. So what we what we're doing when we find a reference is try to look for different kinds of references. So here we have something from the front in different kind of lighting setups where his uh, skin color looks from ghoulish to almost ghoulish. <laughs> we have from the side view, we have from an, another side view, also in different light conditions, and we have another view as well. Then we have a piece of concept art. Unfortunately, I don't know who made this. I apologize for that. If you if you know, let us know in the comments. And then we have some other references as well, which is for the skin texture. So this is designed for, or this reference has been collected specifically to give us this kind of skin feeling in our sculpt. This is something which is interesting when it comes to collecting reference. You don't have to recreate the reference one to one. You can have the the Prince Philip character as the main character reference, and then you can use maybe the eyes from this woman and the um, and the the leathery skin from here, and then maybe we can use the leathery skin from this character as well, or maybe we use the little stubbles here. Whatever it is, it's useful to have multiple pieces of reference where you source different things from them. What's important as well is that you don't have too many pieces of reference. You don't want this to be contradicting in a sense. If you were to, to have 50 old men like this, that's not necessarily useful because now these pieces of reference will contradict each other. One guy will have a long face, one will have a short face, one will have big ears, and another will have small ears, and you end up with something generic and boring. So with all that said, let's jump into ZBrush and we're gonna show you how to use reference when sculpting. Starting off, we are uh, just using a simple sphere. And for the reference to the left, you can see that we are using Pure Ref, which is the best reference tool out there. And we have only two images. Keep your images light early on. You want to stick to, you don't want to make an amalgamation of everything right away. You want to stick to a few pieces of reference and go from there. Work from general to specific. So right now I'm looking specifically at his face. I'm trying to recreate like the real person's face, not the concept art. And I'm trying to recreate the features I'm seeing where we're blocking in some of the, the facial features, some general proportions, some bony landmarks, and just keeping it very simple. I'm, I'm specifically looking at his overall head shape. Then we are going to the side view and we're trying to look at more of the... Um, of the actual uh, profile of him. Specifically now, I'm looking at the nasolabial fold and the flow of the head and how these lines are flowing into his body. And when you have reference like this, you're not, you're not supposed to be a slave to it. It's more figuring out what makes this person who he is and then extracting what's relevant. It's not necessarily useful if you were to just overlay this and replicate exactly what you're seeing, particularly in a case like this where we're not doing a likeness study. If you're doing likeness, that's very different. What we're doing now is we're adapting him to work on, to be something else. I feel like this is basically a likeness study, though. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> like I said, it's a bit too on the nose here, but it, it's, it shows what we need to. But what you want to keep an eye out for is definitely your cheekbones, your nose, and, and the chin. Sort of. It's a labial fold like we're looking at now. Keep, figure out where those landmarks are and how they relate to the rest of the face. We're seeing now that what I'm drawing over isn't necessarily so much specifically tied to the reference. It's more just some general hints about, well, your your features are should be very, they should be round. It's very easy in the beginning to make stuff um, too, too angular or too wobbly. One of the things that sort of 
sets Prince Philip apart is his sunken in eyes. You see those very pronounced cheekbones, but also the very flat space underneath his nose where the philtrum is right above the lips. It's a very big plane, which is something you can caricaturize a lot when you're sculpting. So normally you use more than one piece of reference like this. You might have the concept art we're looking at now where you are, you're, we're looking at this and we are trying to replicate only parts of this where you can see where we want to get the cheekbones more pronounced and the, the brows more pronounced and just generally working up some of the features we are seeing there. But it, it is very beneficial to not have too many pieces of reference. It just makes your job very hard. So once you analyze those those uh, those changes you want to do, then implement them right away. And definitely when sculpting something like this, just a human skull, having that handy somewhere is, is always a good idea. That way you can sort of figure out what is relevant and what can I exaggerate. Then we are looking at specific pieces for the concept art and just trying to get that into it. Oh God. <laughs> and now we're looking at this insanely creepy mouth. Something to be aware of here is how sharp the corners of the mouth is. And this is really the level I go into when I'm looking at my reference, where I'm, I'm actually looking at specific features like this, not just kind of replicating it, but I'm, I'm very much looking at the sharpness of the mouth, the uh, how thick or thin are his lips, and, and being very methodical. And this is something that tends to happen specifically in old people, all the sort of fat deposits around. I mean, if you're you're more skinny, obviously, if you're fat, not so much. But uh, a lot of the fat tends to disappear. That's why you get this wrinkly leather skin as well. He is so creepy. <laughs> it's pretty creepy. Now we're adding the eyes as well, and, and keep it keep it simple. We you know we we really don't want to go too crazy at this point. But what you do want to do is you want to make sure that the corners of the eyes are really sharp. This is something. This is a huge beginner mistake where you make them you make them really round and soft. Yeah, they're the same thing with the mouth that Henning mentioned before. You often end up with this uh, washed out clay look, almost like if you took turpentine, put on top of your clay sculpture, and just erased everything. That's something that beginners often uh, misunderstand. And then we have to add the top lid as well. Really important to get the top lid right. Same with the bottom lid as well. And just look at the, analyze the shape. One of my favorite life hacks when sculpting is um, pronouncing or making it more extreme, the, the eyelids, how thick they are. If you make them thicker, it's easier for the light to be caught there, even though it's not as realistic. Yeah, that generally works really well. Maybe moving the eyeball in a little bit just to create some thickness there. And then we're looking at the, the wrinkles around his eyes as well. It's really important to analyze this. This is I do this I do this all the time. Maybe I don't draw on top of it like this, but I'm always analyzing the specifics of the reference. And that's why it's useful to have multiple pieces of reference of uh, the same character because you you're going to see different things based on different light scenarios or makeup. Here's also an interesting one. This guy has a giant lump on the back of his head. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is a tumor or something, some kind of nice royal tumor, or if this is just like an optical illusion. But I thought it was cool anyway. And since I, we're doing... I think it comes from the suit, the, like <laughs> yeah, bulging up be. against his <laughs> old neck. But I thought it was cool. So, you know, let's include it. And now I'm counting the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, you know, it's not that you have to go one, two, three, four, five, but it, it is useful to to know the exact amount of teeth. We're not just doing a generic set of teeth. In this case, he has eight teeth we can see. He has more in the background there, like his uh, um, the ones for the back, but we are just gonna recreate eight now. And then we're going to try to shape them a little bit as well, based on the reference. This reminds me of an odd conversation I had with a dentist once <laughs> about teeth. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's about it. That's it. <laughs> I was waiting for something else. <laughs> and now we're actually analyzing the shape of the teeth as well. And then we'll draw on top of it and just analyze it to recreate it. It might be a no-brainer when you're talking about it, but teeth actually have a huge impact on the character, yeah. especially once you start opening the mouth, showing some of the lips being open and apart. It's something that can be forgotten pretty easily, but it actually can make a big impact. Like light can just subtly catch a few of the teeth. It's so weird. I rotated one tooth a little bit and the appeal is lost. 
This is also how you can self feedback instead of relying on other people to feedback your work always having solid sets of reference like this allows you to feedback a lot of yourself. Of course, you will need other people to look at your work as well, but it can be really useful to to use this as a, as a way to improve your art without somebody telling you what to do. Just focusing more on the eyes as well. Get the eyes right and everything else follows. And here we are just analyzing what we have and what what's what we have in the reference and what we have in our model. And you can see that it's it's quite lacking what we have in the model right now. And the way you improve is to look at reference, analyze what's going on, analyze the plane changes, the general volumes, and then get them in from there. One thing I want to emphasize is if, especially on old people, if you're struggling with the wrinkles and the folds around the eyes, don't worry, it's like, it's a super complicated area. And for a lot of old people, like Prince Philip here is kind of dead. So <laughs> it's like they're lacking because the skin is so thin. But when you do have old people where they're more pronounced, it's a really complicated and intricate area. So don't sweat it too much. You also need a reference of these areas of one specific person and not like when you have 200 different ones because the eyes are so unique. Mm. You can look at, it's particularly the eyes for old people and they go crazy when you get really old. Just getting the cheekbones in there as well, just really defining what's going on, seeing where the bone is and then seeing how the skin flows on top of it. For someone like Prince Philip here, it's pretty essential to get this right because he has his eyes are so sunken into the skull and there's so little fat underneath his eyes so it's it's really I mean you can even see it like the speck on the reference image where it just breaks that's where you have your cheekbones what do you have to keep in mind as well what we're doing now is is not, again let me just be clear we're not doing a likeness stuff right. we do this <laughs> in a very different sense uh, we're doing orc mr philip obviously the ears very very <laughs> lifelike as well almost there Speaking of the ears, this is where we also analyze the different shapes we have on the ear. And since we are departing quite a lot from the original design for that, we, we, we have to adapt what we have. But pretty much the only difference from the reference to <laughs> the actual model. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the mouth is a little bigger. Yeah, a little stuff, bit. But no, not by a lot. No, th those are the calls that you have to make when you're using reference like this, is figuring out how much do you want to stick to your reference for certain parts and where do you want to you know, uh, have some artistic freedom. Look at the forehead as well. This is where you have to sculpt this with asymmetry. If you sculpt the forehead with symmetry, nothing is going to work. You, it will just look so mechanical. So analyze properly what's going on and then recreate it. As I say, something you can do quite a lot where 99% of your sculpt is symmetrical, but just around the center line, maybe the width of the nose, something like that, Make that asymmetrical, and now your entire model is going to look a lot, a lot more organic. That, that's what I. That's what I do always. It's it's a really good little tip. So the stylization is important to get in there because you don't want to you don't want to be go too similar to to your reference, even though we're kind of doing that here. <laughs> <laughs> but it is to show you how how direct you can use the reference to create something new. In general, with wrinkles, I I tend to be. A slave to my reference yeah. because because there's so much individual variation but even so the face still follows a few basic rules that are sometimes hard to get right i feel like look at the wrinkles from the ear as well this is something a lot of people actually like don't know exists but there are a lot of small little wrinkles around the ear which is depends on your age as well yeah it's an old person specific wrinkle um you usually see it in people obviously depending on their skin type and stuff, maybe like their 50s and upwards, you start to, to notice it more. The same thing with the uh, floppy platysma here where it starts to get more saggy because the muscles get weaker and weaker. There are a lot of things you you put into your scopes when looking at a reference like this, which you wouldn't do otherwise because there's so much there are so many small little weird plane changes. And basically his entire jaw region. If some if a student showed me that, I would be like, Yeah, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, doesn't work like that. It just ha it just means you just have to be a thousand years old for that to actually show off on you. But it that's but he why is. Yeah, I mean he practically is. So. so that's also why it's useful to have reference as well. Like if you if you were to show this to a supervisor and and they go, yeah, it's wrong. You go, nope, <laughs> it's just Prince Philip because it, <laughs> it backs up your choices and it also makes it easier for you to do choices as well. 
Now we're looking at more specifically at the, the skin quality. So far, the, the main reference we had of Philip is is really is, is really smooth. His skin is like it's it's really it's really weird because it's it's very old, but it's very smooth still. But now we have uh, some reference here. It looks like some kind of Russian farmer or something, which has worked who's worked it's out it's out her entire life, and it's really like wrinkled and it's like heavy leather skin. And I really like that feeling. So then we just find a reference picture of that and we just implement that into our sculpt. One thing that the eyes and the mouth share, and I guess to some extent um, your butthole as well is that it's a ring muscle, mm. it's a circular muscle. So uh, wrinkles, they will sort of go out from that center and then go perpendicular across to the muscle. So they sort of span out. It's like a fan from the center. That's a good way to think about it. You can always know. trust flip normals with butt facts. Yeah, if you have more. I haven't looked at, at anus wrinkles <laughs> before, so I don't know, but I assume. I had a friend of mine who had to sculpt one for VFX and he was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> So now it's more looking generally at the this skin quality. It's not necessarily so much replicate everything one to one. It's more it's more get the feeling across as well. Now we're just going back to the original reference and just looking a little bit at uh, some of the specific shapes they have as well. But this is where again you don't you don't want to have too many pieces of reference. They will contradict contradict each other. It's kind of like if you mer if you if you were to use every single color, you just up you end up with something boring. Yeah, brown or like dark color. Yeah. Something. Now it's looking more specifically at different kinds of uh, different areas of it. I'm, I'm now looking at the corner of his mouth. Just really trying to get those right. This is where it just takes a lot of time to get these these areas right getting the corners of the mouth right getting the eyes right getting the nose right can be really tricky because it can be very subtle changes he has a very long chin yeah like in real life as well it's a big chunk of mass right there it really is but it's, it's interesting to see the difference in, in skin texture anything in in on the inside of the nasal labial fold very smooth very flat. Anything on the outside has volume. This is also where we're looking at imperfections as well. Just adding some of those can really just break up your skin a lot. You don't necessarily have to have skin pores or anything for it to read as skin. It can also read by having these little imperfections. So I use reference at every single stage of the project, but there they might be different kinds of reference. Originally for this, I actually had reference of elephant skin and rhino skin as well, just to really make him like more monstrous. And and that might work as well. Like if you if you were to do this for if I was doing this for like a character for VFX, I probably would have had maybe some rhino skin for for his back or maybe his head just to make it feel really heavy. And then maybe maybe some shark skin on his ears. Just a lot of different kinds of skin on, on different areas. And you, for that, you need reference. So it's here, we're just analyzing these ears and just adding some imperfections to his ears as well. Remember, you have to actually sculpt it and you can't just draw it on top. <laughs> <laughs> Done. And I'm also working with eight, without symmetry as well, just because that gives us a lot more variation. So if there are a few things you should take away from this video is, be specific with your reference. Truly observe what's going on. Don't just copy what you're seeing, but observe what's there and adapt it to your concept. Use enough pieces of reference so you have enough data, but don't use so many pieces that it, you become a complete slave to what you are working with. Yeah, it's a, it's a fine balance. and it's, it's, it's definitely a skill. We're both finding them, but also using reference and it can be it can quickly become something you're way too restricted by but at on the other end sometimes people are also proudly not using reference and they end up with a subpar result yeah use reference as much as you can that's that's really one of the key secrets to getting interesting and realistic sculpts no matter what you're doing even if you're doing some kind of crazy lord of the rings or <laughs> inspired yeah. by philip
So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, let us know in the comments and make sure to like, comment and subscribe and click on the little notification bell to get notified every single time we put out a new video. Thanks guys.